Hey guys, Ismail here and today I'm going to be giving you my university tier list in the UK and please note that this is simply going to be my opinion at this current time. My opinion may change as I get older and also this is not to offend anyone. So if you find that your university doesn't rank as highly as you thought it would have, then please don't be offended. This is simply for a laugh but also just to give you my opinion on what I think of each of these universities. Here in front of me, I do have each of the Russell Group universities as those are the ones that I'm going to be ranking today. And I'm going to be putting them into five different categories. They are creme de la creme, being the best, great, decent, hmm, and oh no. So like I say, please don't be offended by any of these rankings, but without further ado, we're going to jump straight into it. But before we do jump straight into it, if you're new here or if you haven't already, then make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell to turn all post notifications on so that you don't miss out on a single video as soon as it goes live. Also, if you want to ask me questions directly via Instagram DM or the chance to play games with me on platforms such as PC, PS4 and PS5, then make sure you become a channel member today by clicking the join button below this video. It only costs £5 a month and it definitely is worth it in my opinion. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. And here we do have each of the Russell Group universities ready to be ranked. And the first one, as you can see, is the University of Birmingham. Hmm. So I was actually <laughs> rejected from the University of Birmingham as one of the three rejections from my master's degree uh, applications. However, that doesn't actually shape my opinion of the University of Birmingham for this tier list, as I still do think it's not only a great university, but a great city as well. As some people will think, ew, Birmingham, never want to touch uh, that city. But when you actually think about it, Birmingham is a massive student city with multiple universities. You've got the University of Birmingham, you've got Aston University, you've got Newman College, you've got Birmingham City University, and I think there was one more that I haven't uh, listed. And so you're likely to have a very good time over there uh, in terms of the student experience. But also it is number one on the uh, High Flyers 2020 to 2021 guide from the Times for the um, universities that are targeted by the most amount of top employers. So I can't actually give it anything less than great. It's not quite creme de la creme. However, based on the fact that the, it is a great university with also a great uh, city and student life, it does go into the great section, in my opinion. Now, we've got Cardiff University. Cardiff University is the only Welsh uh, Russell Group University. It's almost like it's in this list simply because it is the best uh, university in Wales and Wales is part of the UK. And although I've heard that Wales, uh, Cardiff rather, is actually a pretty decent city in terms of nightlife, I've also heard some pretty bad things about some of the people there. I've heard about nitties and uh, other weird people in Cardiff. And as a university, I would say it's all right. It's nothing great, but it's not bad either. So you know what? I think Cardiff is going to go onto the decent section. Next up, we have LSE. So the London School of Economics, and uh, I believe it's now LSE uh, Political Sciences. So London School of Economics and Political Sciences, uh, something along those lines. It is, I believe, that one of the creme de la creme universities of London and of the country. However, it is also a very expensive university. When it comes to tuition fees, you better be thankful that the UK government has capped undergraduate uh, fees because when you look at their master's courses, the fees are ridiculous. You'll be finding courses for over £20,000 a year. I, at the University of Manchester, will be paying something like £10,000 a year. So just be thankful that if you're studying there at undergraduate level that you're only having to pay a maximum of £9,250 a year rather. So with the tuition fees also being expensive at postgraduate level and also the cost of uh, living in London being so high, it is a bit of a problem. However, if you can afford uh, the cost of living at LSE and you do get into this very prestigious university, I believe it is in there as the creme de la creme and it will be the first university that goes there. Next up, we have the University of Cambridge. Now, my Cambridge justification is going to be the same as the University of Oxford. If you go to Cambridge, if you go to Oxford, it doesn't matter what course you do 
people will be like, oh my God, you went to Cambridge, you went to Oxford, get right in. Hello with welcome arms, like wide open. So instantly you will come out with great graduate prospects simply because of the fact that you went to one of these two universities. So you know what? I can't even argue against it. It can't even go anywhere below creme de la creme. Cambridge, as well as Oxford, go straight up there. I would say that Oxford is better than Cambridge, not because of the reputation, but also because of the city. Um, I believe that Oxford is a better town city, can't remember which one, than uh, Cambridge, as there is more to do in Oxford than there is Cambridge. And also, Cam uh, Oxford seems to be a better tourist attraction than uh, Cambridge as well. Next up, we have King's College London. This again was one of the universities, one of the three universities rather, that I was rejected from. Oxford was the third one, by the way. Um, King's College is a great university. However, it's not quite up there with the likes of LSE. With the cost of living, it's slightly lower. You do get to live slightly outside of London uh, with King's College and it does have multiple campuses. So depending on which campus you're going to be studying at, it, the cost of uh, living does vary quite a bit actually. And also it has the same nightlife as LSE as you would probably be going to places like XOYO and Tiger Tiger, etc. And also for postgraduate, the fees are lower than LSE from what I have seen. However, because it's not got quite the reputation of LSE um, and everything else is quite similar, I would put it up there as great. We're going to be moving on to the University of York. I can't really say much about the University of York. It was one of the universities that I did have an offer from for my uh, postgraduate studies. However, not many people I know go to the University of York and I'd pretty much say it's just average. Um, there's nothing that really stands out to me about the University of York. The city itself doesn't really stand out to me. The university doesn't really stand out to me. And even in the league tables, it just seems very average. So we're going to put it at the respectable decent. Next up, we have, I believe this is Imperial. Imperial, once again, it's basically LSC but it's imperial like they are literally the same in terms of prestige i would say you wouldn't be any uh worse off going to for example lse than going to imperial and vice versa and cost of living again very high especially at postgraduate level so given that you go to one of these four universities you are likely to be set for life and that is what i'm probably going to leave it at till the end we're going to see once we get onto for example ucl and manchester etc but next up we have the University of Bristol. This is one of the best universities in the country. Once you step outside of London, obviously you have the likes of Durham, Manchester and well, Bristol. So Bristol is a great university. Cost of living, however, is very high. When I was looking for accommodation, I was seeing over £7,000. And a lot of people tell me that when they have been to Bristol, just buying general things like food and whatnot is also very expensive. And also it has a great underground scene in terms of like, if you like drum and bass events and house events and whatnot, then Bristol is a great place for that. So in terms of student experience, it seems to be very good. And because of it's also a uh, great uh, academic reputation, it would probably have to go into the great section for me. So far, we don't have any hmms and we don't have any oh no's, but that might change very quickly. So next up, we have the University of Warwick. I had an offer from the University of Warwick for postgraduate. I didn't apply at undergraduate because there's no way I would have got in undergraduate, but I could have if I wanted to for postgraduate. It's a great university, very prestigious. People were saying that I should have chose Warwick over Manchester. My brothers wanted me to choose, choose Warwick over Manchester. My uh, parents wanted me to choose Warwick over Manchester. Someone even commented that I should have chosen Warwick over Manchester. But... As great of a university it is, and as great of a campus that the university does have, it's in Coventry. And Coventry, I don't even need to explain that city. <laughs> it's like, you know when you don't even need to explain something like DMU, you don't even need to explain Coventry. So we can't even put it into creme de la creme. It, for that reason alone, it has to go into just great. I say just great, I'd say still that is quite respectable. University of Liverpool is up next and again this is like Cardiff or York I don't really know anyone that goes here but Liverpool is a massive city if you're a Liverpool uh, football club fan and you have a season ticket great 
you can study and go and watch uh, Liverpool uh, games at the weekend. Or if you fancy, watch Everton instead and see Rafa Benitez. But whilst the university is just, hmm, the uh, nightlife and also just the student experience is pretty decent. And it's also quite close to Wales, Manchester and surrounding areas. So if you did want to travel out of Liverpool, then uh, well, you got options. However, the accent is a bit questionable. And from what I've seen, a lot of people that go and study at Liverpool are locals. I don't really see anyone from the South thinking to themselves, you know what, I really want to study at the University of Liverpool. So it's between decent and hmm. I don't know. I'm going to put it in hmm. Because like I say, the university itself is just hmm. But it does have a good city life and student life. However, I don't think it just uh, makes it into decent just about. It's close, but I'm going to put this one as the first hmm, university. Queen Mary uh, University of London. Now, this is a good university if you want to study medicine or business, I believe the other one is. However, for any other course, no one uh, raves about going to Queen Mary. So it's, I would say, in my opinion, if this university wasn't part of the University of London uh, group, then it'd just be bang on average. And also when you consider the fact that it's also uh, got London living costs and so it's expensive for something that's not really that worth it unless you study medicine or business. I'm also going to put this one into the hmm section. Next up we have Q Queen's University Belfast. Let's be real, who actually says, I want to go and study to, at uh, QUB. I don't know a single person that studies at this university. Maybe one. I'm not sure if they still study there, though. I think they might have even dropped out. So that, that says a lot. <laughs> but um, this is also one of those universities like Cardiff. It's like, well, this is a UK Russell group. We just need something from Northern Ireland. So we're just going to wedge this in. Um, I can't say that Belfast is some like desirable to a uh, English student. And if an English student wanted to go somewhere else, they probably go to one of the Scottish universities. I don't really say QUB is somewhere that people rave about. So again, I'm going to put this into hmm. UCL. Now, this is basically bit better than King's College, but it's not quite as good as LSE and Imperial. So it would, if I had a section, go in between uh, creme de la creme and great however because it's not quite creme de la creme in my opinion i would put it in great it's a very reputable university uh again cost of living very high because it's in london but then again if you can afford it then you're in good hands because there's so much to do in london great clubs like xoyo tiger tiger and all sorts but again that's only if you can afford it the university of exeter right <laughs> This is this again. It's it's one of the all right Russell Group universities in my opinion. I mean, I haven't really heard anyone that goes to Exeter say they love it. I've heard them say that the nightlife is basically non-existent unless you're the sort of person that loves to go to a pub, because Exeter is basically just full of pubs. It's not really a clubbing place, and in terms of general student experience, it's just a bit meh. And the university itself is a bit. Mm, in terms of like it's just all right i'd put it probably like liverpool's kind of level it is part of the russell group university um uh, group but again because of all of those factors that make it not really worth it i'm actually going to put it in the uh oh no section in terms of the russell groups if this was just a general universities in the uk it probably going decent and hmm or but because it is part of the russell group and we're ranking russell group universities this is going to go in the oh no section now we have the University of Edinburgh and I've got to say that this is probably the best Scottish university next to St Andrews depending on how you see it but this one is actually part of the Russell Group University St Andrews isn't and so we're going to be ranking Edinburgh I've heard it's a great city however it's also quite expensive up there but if you're a Scottish student like you have a Scottish residency then university is either very cheap or very free not very free but free you get what I mean so 
it's a very solid choice if you're Scottish if you're English however unless you really want to get away from your family then um, I don't really see why you'd want to uh, go here I mean it is a great university but then again you have all these other options in great that are a bit closer to home and will still give you similar prospects um, it's better than decent it's not quite creme de la creme in my opinion I'm going to put it at great Next up, we have the University of Glasgow from memory. I have a friend that goes here. He loves it at University of Glasgow. The only thing, um, the problem is that to get home, he usually has to take a plane home because trains are expensive and it's cheaper to get a flight home. No joke. So he is, um, doesn't come home that often, but when he does, I think he said that he spends about 80 pounds, which is quite expensive and obviously it's quite long to uh, get there but if you're quite close like already living in for example Newcastle or even somewhere in Scotland pretty decent option and it's also an all right university so when you consider it it's like a balance it's just like all right um, expensive if you're li obviously living in the south of England it's an all right university and um, depending on the friends you make you can have great time but he doesn't really talk about Glasgow as a city he more talks about just uh, friends that he's made so I'm going to put this one in decent to go there with York and Cardiff now the University of Leeds this is a good university in my opinion I did also have an offer from this uh, university I might have even missed out a couple that I've had offers from I forgot to even mention that um, I had an offer from Leeds for both uh, undergraduate actually no I cancelled my undergraduate application uh, before Leeds got back to me but I did have one for postgraduate uh, it's a great city there is so much to do there's a uh, tattoo in Leeds it's a uh, chain bar in like Birmingham Manchester and Leeds so you've got some pretty bougie places I've heard that Headingley is a great and obviously you've got Ollie Run and so when you consider great student life it's quite cheap and also quite a dear, good university I'm gonna put this one in the great section now we have only uh, one two three four five six universities left notice how the University of Nottingham is almost lost and so is the University of Manchester so I graduated from the University of Nottingham uh, in BSc management with a 2-1 and I'm about to start at the University of Manchester so the University of Durham is first here now this is a very good university however Durham as a town is very dead it's in the middle of nowhere and again if you're living in the south of England it's quite problematic to get to I remember it when I was looking to uh, visit it was said it will take about six hours and it was also very expensive I heard that uh, Durham's uh, student club or like the club that's there was once voted the worst nightclub in Europe not not just in England in Europe so it's not really saying much about the student experience there I guess you kind of have to make your own experience but as, as an outsider it's a good university however it's massively let down by the student uh, experience so it's going to just go on to I don't know I'm gonna put it on decent I think if it was if it had a better student experience it'd be on great but because it's so bad from what I've heard it just has to go into decent and people do say that Durham is the uni that you go to if you can't get into uh, Oxford or Cambridge but moving on Newcastle good very good uh, student experience however the university itself I don't know I've, I've heard that it's fallen down uh, the rankings quite a lot in recent years I've heard that it's not got the uh, kind of name they once had and not many people tell me like on a serious note that they want to go to uni uh, the University of Newcastle as their first option some people will say it purely because they've heard that Newcastle is a great city it's very cheap it has a 24 7 Greggs even I've never even heard of that before I heard that Newcastle um, has that but because of um, its student experience it actually saves it from the oh no in my opinion and because it's not such a great university in comparison to the rest in terms of its uh, overall reputation and what you can do after graduating it doesn't quite get decent so I'm just going to put it in hmm now the University of Manchester you know what this is actually going to be the first non-London 
uh, non uh, Oxbridge University that I'm going to slap into creme de la creme. You know, this, the reason I'm going to do this is because when you look at the prestige of this uh, university, it is consistently fifth or sixth in the, uh, in the UK and top 30 in the world, whether you look at QS, Shanghai rankings, and other rankings uh, for universities. And not only that, Manchester is a massive student city. You've got the University of Manchester, Manchester Metropolitan University, Southwood College, um, Edge Hill University, and a small, few smaller like colleges there that um, make it a vibrant and great student experience. I mean, I've heard stories about the University of Manchester over the last year in terms of student experience with the university itself, which is a problem. It could get downgraded, but I heard that at the same time, the city itself, the people you meet, the prospects you get after, um, and how cheap the city itself is as well, truly just make up for that. And so I am gonna put it at creme de la creme. I'm not being biased here. But it's not because I'm attending here, because I, for example, I just put Nottingham in creme de la creme. However, I'm not going to, um, and I'm gonna explain that shortly. The University of Southampton. This is, again, I'd say it's a good, between decent and good. The student experience is pretty uh, good from what I've heard. You've got a club called Switch that I've always wanted to go to. Um, still probably going to try and go there one, one day. And apparently it's just pretty decent all round. The only thing is that it is in South, so it's kind of expensive. It's not quite as expensive as Bristol, but obviously it's not as cheap as the likes of Warwick, Nottingham, Sheffield, Manchester, etc. And in terms of prospects, I wouldn't say it's as great, uh, good as one of these. So I'm going to put it into decent. Now, the University of Nottingham. I graduated from this university, so I know all about this uh, university. It's in a pretty decent city in terms of students. Uh, you've got the University of Nottingham and Nottingham Trent University. So that's over 60,000 students in one city. Some of the clubs there are great. Inc was my favourite one in Nottingham. But then you've also got Prism, Pom Pom, um, Ocean and a couple of other smaller ones. So in terms of student experience, as, uh, in terms of going out or even just things to do, for example, if you want to go to bars, arcades, etc. You've got so much to do in Nottingham. The university itself has been sliding down uh, the rankings quite heavily. I could not believe my eyes when I saw this and it did somewhat make me regret choosing Nottingham over one of my other offers um, at undergraduate. So when I joined the university, uh, it was something like 82nd in the world on QS World Rankings. When I graduated, it was 102nd. So it's not even a top 100 university uh, in the world anymore, according to QS, which is a bit tragic. And I would compare the University of Nottingham to uh, an insur like insurance. You've got it, all is going well, but as soon as something goes wrong, you try and phone up your insurance, or in this case, um, student services, and it is an absolute pain to get through to them and to find a resolution. I'm telling you, I have ne never in my life seen such incompetence from student services or any like employed person and organization. If they were working for any other company, I'm sure as hell they would have been fired by now. But for whatever reason, at the University of Nottingham, they're allowed to keep their jobs for being so incompetent. My, for example, my online degree certificate was delayed by over a week. It's the 31st of August that I'm recording this. My physical certificate is still not here. Other people received theirs at other universities one month ago or even more than that and mine still isn't here. And so it just has to go into decent. I'll be real with you. It's a shame because I would have put it in great if it weren't for all of the, that incompetence. But because of that, it just has to slide down into decent. It's not, it, maybe if it was three, four years ago, it could have gone into great. But now, unless Nottingham fix up really quickly, it needs to go into decent. I do have a full video, by the way, coming on my uh, opinion on the University of Nottingham. It's going to be a full review. So once again, if you haven't uh, already subscribed or if you're new to this channel and you do want to check that out, then make sure you click the subscribe button and click the bell to turn all post notifications on so you don't miss out on a single video as soon as it goes live. 
Now, last but not least, we have the University of Sheffield. I had an offer from this university for both undergraduate and postgraduate. They just might, must love me that much, you know, to give me an offer twice, and I've rejected them twice. But <laughs> nevertheless, it's pr a pretty decent university. Um, I would probably put Sheffield on Southampton's kind of level. Um, in fact, yeah, it's just going to go on decent because it's a it's a decent university and it's just about in the QS uh, 100. But I don't really see it as any better than, for example, Southampton, Nottingham and York. I don't quite see it on the level of UCL, King's College, Warwick, etc. And the good thing about it is that it is cheap. It does have a club called Tank which I've heard is amazing. I was supposed to go there one time and it just fell apart. I do want to still go there, see uh, Jamie Duggan, Clone and other uh, people that usually perform there. So in terms of student experience, it's great, but as a university overall, it's just all right. So I guess it has to go into decent. And there you have it, guys. That is my whole tier uh, ranking list. I can see I've been recording for 26 minutes. I've maybe gone on for way too long. But I hope this has given you an insight into what I think of each of the Russell Group universities at this current time. Once again, please don't be offended by any of this. It's simply satire and to be taken lightly. It's not to be taken seriously. So for example, if you go to the University of Exeter, don't think to yourself, oh my God, what have I done? Why am I studying here? Mahel put it in the oh no section. It's the only university that's in the oh no section. Listen, this is my opinion. You can have yours. I can have mine. We all respect that. We respect each other's opinions. But if you did enjoy this video, then make sure to leave a like, comment below and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with this uh, tier list and what you, uh, university you think should go where. And make sure to follow my social media. That's at Mahel Khan on Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok at Mahel X on Twitter and official Mahel Khan on Facebook. Let me know as well in the comments if you'd like to see any other videos uh, from me and especially more tier videos like this. I could do, for example, party universities or just general um, tier lists are already here because I saw a few that include like DMU and the others, Coventry, you know. I'm not even going to say anything about that. But if you do want to see that, then uh, do let me know. I've been Mahel giving you my University UK tier list and it is only my opinion and I will see you in the next one. Peace.